Hello and welcome to Northwest Knitting. My name is Kathy and I'm coming to you from Oregon where I do my knitting and thinking about wool and other fibers. I'm so happy you could join me. You can find me on Instagram and on Ravelry as Northwest Knitting. It's been quite a while since I was last here and it was just, as they say, it was one thing after another. Um, first, um, we were going on a long trip, so I thought I would podcast before that. And every time I did, I ran into problems. The main thing being that we had um, plans to roof our house and the roofers decided that they were free um, much earlier at least a month earlier and so it was very difficult for me to do this because we have two little outbuildings and they were making noise one place or another and playing loud music and having a very festive time it felt like a party but it wasn't a very good way to do a podcast <laughs> okay then the other thing is i went on the 10-day trip back east and we went to a wedding and saw lots of people in west virginia and pennsylvania and, and it was really a great trip um, but on the way home we had difficulty um, with our flight um, it was the weather was terrible and when we got to denver we ended up um, it, there were huge delays in denver and then when we got on our airplane heading home um, we had to turn around after 20 minutes because of mechanical problems and i don't know about you but when they say mechanical problems i am fine with going straight back <laughs> But we ended up having to spend the night in Denver. And so there was a lot of time in a very, very crowded airport. So and within 24 hours after coming home, I came down with COVID. So who knows exactly where I got it. But anyway, it was towards the end of the trip, I'm sure. I'm very grateful I did not have it earlier in the trip and give it to everybody we visited. <laughs> but um, anyway, so then I've, I am now about um, 14 days out and I think I had what was considered a mild case, but um, still not fun, mostly in the uh, head cold problems and fatigue, which I'm still feeling. So. I decided I really want a podcast. So here I am, and I hope I don't have too much congestion. I might just, I'm going to just try and pause at those moments where I clear my throat. <laughs> oh my gosh, so many things have happened in the world um, since I last saw you, but I think, oh, I have many thoughts, but I think I will stick to knitting for right now, and uh, I think that's what you're here for. Lots happened in the knitting world as well. There's so many new patterns and um, just lots of fun things to think about. I did not go to one yarn store um, during our trip, and um, which was surprising. I will talk to you at some point, um, at soon, um, in a few minutes probably, about travel knitting because I have some thoughts about that after um, after this trip. I actually, in one of my initial podcasts that I attempted to do, I talked quite a bit about it and um, all my plans and thoughts. And now I get to tell you what I actually experienced. So we'll just cut to the chase on travel knitting. But first, let me tell you what I'm wearing. I'm wearing the Edie sweater by Isabel Kramer. It's my second one. I think I talked about my first version in episode two. And um, it's a similar, that one was also a blue, although more variegated. Um, this one, I, um, I did do some changes to the pattern. Um, so let me tell you about this. It's got a very, very simple neckline. And in fact, she recommends that you can 
just leave it as is. And I ended up on both of mine doing, um, I think you pick up stitches and then you do a purl row and then you bind off. So it's a very something very, very fast like that. And even though I liked how it looked without that finishing here, um, towards the, in the back, I, it felt like it was gaping. <coughs> and um, so I thought that picking out the stitches would help. Okay, pause for coughing. Okay, I think that worked. Um, I did this in the Queensland United again. I have yet another project in this, which I've talked about endlessly, so I won't say too much about this wool, except to say that it's half wool, half cotton, and um, it's got certified, um, <coughs> um, meaning it's processed in a way that is not damaging to the environment. I really like this um, because it feels more cottony than with wool on pot. So I'm gonna show you, this one I made a little more crop than I usually do. This is not crop for most people, but for me it feels pretty cropped. And um, so the changes I made is in her pattern, she has a, a, a texture going across here and I eliminated it because it didn't seem to me that um, this was inclined to bias. Um, she also has a nice little faux seam here and um, I really like the fit. It's, it, it just feels, uh, it feels real nice. And I could see making the same pattern in a, in a long sleeved um, woolly knit would be fun. But her original pattern is uh, designed with uh, Quince & Co. Sparrow, which is 100% linen. And um, this seemed like a similar type of fabric. The other one I made was made out of hempathy, which has a lot of hemp in it and had a real and more of a drapey feel to it. So anyway, I'm real happy with this. It's very simple. Um, it's really useful in my wardrobe, but um, um, not it wasn't thrilling to knit because I had already done it. And um, the first time I had done this, I had I didn't have much experience with knitting um, tops for myself. And so um, it, it had its own excitement there, even though it was um, pretty straightforward. And this time it, it, um, it was more just, it was more of a pro uh, project knit, I think is what people say. I wanted the top. So very useful. It goes with a lot of different things. So let me see here. Uh, let me talk to you a little bit about the knit, the uh, travel knitting. So um, I read all kinds of things about um, uh, on the on the blogs about travel knitting and I've listened to people I just listened to Inga on um, um, knitting traditions talk about it sounded like she needed a whole other suitcase for all the yarn she was bringing with her um, I felt um, two things one I really really wanted to make sure I had enough knitting with me so there was no moment where I'm flailing about because I thought traveling, especially we were going to rent a car. We did rent a car and I knew there'd be driving in the car that I, I would really want to have some knitting and also at night kind of decompressing from all the visits and so forth we were doing. So um, that was really important to me. But the other thing was I didn't want to have it be cumbersome and burdensome where I'm having to carry so much. So we normally um, do carry on. So I had a very um, compact little suitcase and then a, um, a kind of a tote bag that I bring. And the knitting was mostly in the tote bag. So my theory was um, in my previous 
attempt at podcasting, I was telling you about how I did this sweater. I knit the sweater on one of the last trips we took before COVID. And um, <laughs> you can see I hadn't done any kind of like wavy lines, feather and fan. Um, but then um, it turns out this one I did. I did this probably, a, I don't know, at least a couple years ago. And I believe it's a Hohe Locatelli, possibly the party on my needles. And um, I, I uh, used candy skein yarn. It's a yarn uh, where that uh, the yarn is hand dyed in Astoria, Oregon. And um, this is their yummy fingering base. And um, I'm not totally sure of the colors. I'm pretty sure the, the uh, dark blue is blue um, corn chip. And this blue right here, I think, is their poppy seed. And I don't know what this little magenta strip is. Um, I still have a lot of the magenta. Um, so anyway, this was a great travel knit. That's why I'm mentioning it to you now. It's a great travel knit because it is just, it so squishes up. And so I'm pretty sure that I finished this on my trip and wore it at the end in Paris somewhere, maybe, maybe Monet's garden. <laughs> and <clears throat> it didn't take up much space to either knit or wear as a finished object. So I was trying to duplicate that <clears throat> on this trip. Um, so I'm gonna pause on that for just a minute though, because I just wanna mention a few other things. Um, one thing that I read before I went was a reminder to wind my yarn, and I was very happy I'd seen that because even though it seems obvious, that's the kind of thing I could easily forget. And even though winding yarn while traveling is not the worst thing in the world, it wasn't really what I wanted to do. So um, that was a good reminder. And um, I also wanted to make sure I had at least two different projects because I'd, I knew I'd get um, fatigued with just one and um, would like to go back and forth. That had mixed results, which I'll tell you about in a minute. But the main issue, I think, for most of us is the uh, needles. And I was reluctant to bring my Chiago interchangeable needles. So um, I, I and and but I didn't want and I didn't want to bring bamboo needles, and so I ended up bringing some individual um, um, uh, metal needles that I had, <clears throat> and it worked out okay. Nobody caused me any problems, and I've never had a problem myself. But I have a dear friend who, when she was coming back from Mexico, um, either going in or out. I think she was coming into the States actually, <clears throat> or heading to the States. She was, her um, needles were taken away or, or she ended up having to pull her project off the needles. And that of course is everybody's nightmare. But I didn't have any trouble with it. And I have to say that overall, um, it was more an issue for me of space constraints and looking for something that would be entertaining. So I have a couple projects on the needles right now and it was hard for me to decide um, which to bring. But let me tell you about the main one I brought um, was a, a shawl that I have kind of gotten obsessed with. And even though it's something fairly simple and I probably could have come up with a way to do it myself. I um, I just really wanted to buy this. So I bought the new Lina, and here is the Summer Nacht shawl. And I think in German it means summer night. I just uh, saw um, the woman Woolen Twine 
have you seen her? She's a German, um, um, I think, dyer of yarns. And um, she's German. And she said she had it almost with a Z in the S, sort of Zummernacht. But anyway, I just think it's a beautiful, beautiful pattern. And there are many other things in this book that um, I'm intrigued with that sweater. It's called Florencia, and um, there's some other little patterns in here. Um, I like that one. And then here's the longer sleeve version. That one's called Skagen. And I'm sure I might talk about, I'm, I'm hoping I do more of these. Um, I also thought this one was pretty sweet. It looks like you do the sleeves separately. Um, First you do the sleeves on the side and then you join the uh, front and back. That one's called Leto. So <clears throat> Summernacht is um, by Evgenia Dupli. And um, it's meant to have light fingering weight yarn. So I thought wouldn't it be fun to do a light fingering weight shawl the way this one was? Um, so I did a lot of shopping in my wool pantry and um, previously, on my previous attempt at recording, I told you the three th yarns that I was thinking of and I ended up um, but I ended up picking one and I love the yarn and I really like the pattern. I'm not so sure that the yarn is what I had intended for the pattern. And after much debate and anxiety, not anxiety, it's not that serious, but after much debate, I decided to go ahead with it. So here is the yarn I'm using. This is the Nua Sport yarn. It's Carol Feller's um, It's really a beautiful, beautiful yarn. Stolen Stitches is her name. And it's 60% merino wool, 20% yak, 20% linen. So it does have a lot of heft to it. And, um, but I, I don't know, there's something, I think it must be the yak that creates those little, or it's the linen. I don't know, that creates these little white bits. In it. I don't know if you can see that. Um, anyway, <clears throat> I did think, do I really want to, this is actually a heftier yarn and not quite what I had in mind for summer shawl. Um, I started getting really obsessed with the idea of doing a very light wool and I've gotten this yarn um, at my farmer's market. It's very thin, as you can see. And I thought maybe that would be a better way to go and, um, and so forth. But, you know, unless it's just wickedly hot here, in the, in the summer it always cools down. And so, I think I would use this shawl even in the summer and it, it doesn't feel terribly wooly. It's, you really can tell it's got that um, 
linen. And I don't know much about yak, but whatever it's contributing to this yarn feels fabulous. It has a lot of drape. Um, I feel like it has pretty good stitch definition. And as you can see, it's one of those um, sort of a feather and fan. So very nice, uh, pro very nice uh, pattern. And um, what's different about it from some of the other patterns I've seen is that the portion of the, the wavy part really goes for quite a while mixed in with um, garter stitch. Um, and I really like how it's done. And it, it also has more, um, um, a little bit more of a stockinette in the, within the, um, that little lacy pattern. So anyway, I've really enjoyed it and it was fun to work on. <clears throat> while I was traveling. Now, the other thing I brought though, and this is why I need to, you need to have another project, is that I brought a very fun um, sock pattern, but um, I did a good portion of the cuff, and when I tried it on, I decided it's too tight. It's so tight you can't even see the, um, see the design and so I just so I'm doing it with this very dark yarn I've shown you this before it's my youthful fiber farm um, yarn and it's got mohair instead of nylon in it and I'm doing a pattern called <clears throat> the crunkled the crunkled socks. <laughs> so you can see it has quite a bit of texture there and it's by Kay Jones. Um, so the problem is the crunkling um, looked great when I was knitting it, but then when I put it on, it felt so tight that you couldn't even see the design. So I did feel that I didn't, I was pretty sure I didn't make gauge, so I was using zero uh, needles. And so I'm gonna try it again in ones and see if I can get a better fit. It's just not working very well. So anyway, that was a cautionary tale for you all if you're traveling, bring more than one. Okay, and then this other project I did not bring on the trip with me, but I wanted to, and I didn't because um, I, it's on um, my intercha interchangeable Chiagos, and I did not want to, um, I didn't want to uh, trade needles. And I just thought, Okay, can't bring everything. So that that is this is the um, it's by Tammy Gore, and it is the Trelawney shawl. So isn't this cool? Here's you can see what a great um, yoke here. It was fun to do, and. I think you can actually see it better here. I haven't tried blocking or anything, um, but you can see how, just what a nice pattern that is. <clears throat> I'm really happy with it. Again, I am using the Queensland United in um, two colorways. One is, <clears throat> it's funny when I got this, in the store, it looked a bluish gray, and maybe that looks bluish gray to you. Um, at times, it really does. 
but really to me right now it looks gray so anyway this color is denim and I'm pretty sure here's the the other color I'm pretty sure this is robin's egg so I went back and forth I really I thought about doing the turquoise in kind of a um, an off-white but I just I really think this is great the only thing I'm worried about a little bit I noticed on Ravelry that some of the people have puckering above here I think it's really probably a blocking issue um, and I haven't tried blocking it yet um, I did try it on <clears throat> and it seems to fit pretty well but I just lost it oh gosh oh well I better go fix that later but I, I just lost some stitches um, so anyway I'm really happy with that the yoke was fun and interestingly um, so there was some short rows in the back at, you know, right at, as you start, there's short rows in that yoke. And then, um, and, you, and increases, so you have increases, but once you get into the yoke, there's no increases at all. And I have to say that is very relaxing. And if you haven't done color work before, this would be a really good pattern to do it's very straightforward and um, you don't have to deal with increasing while you're dealing with the yoke so um, i remember my first um, color work pattern that was the hardest part for me um, and i think i was picking up stitches from the um, uh, row below and I, I i was finding it difficult i will say however that the yarn I chose is not a great yarn for your first color work. Even, <laughs> even though I've done <clears throat> quite a bit of color work, I feel like this really shows so, so many defects in the knitting and it was, it's, um, It, yeah, it really, it, it's just so much better to start with a woolly wool. And at times while I was working on this yoke, I thought, oh, I wish that I were working with wool instead of with this uh, cottony. I, I mean, there is wool in here, 50%, but I wish it was um, more of a woolly wool. This is very cotton, cotton feeling. So, but I'm hoping that it'll block out nicely. And um, it's just really, it's sweet. It would be fun to do it in a, in a nice woolly wool, a nice wintry um, uh, top. I think it would be great. So anyway, <clears throat> I highly recommend the pattern. The reason I picked this yarn is I'm still looking for summer tops and <clears throat> this yarn seemed like a better way to go. <clears throat> okay, so let me have some water, see if I can avoid pausing here. So, um, oh my gosh, I do have, I do have one more whip, but do I have it? with me okay there's that oh the reason i couldn't find it is it looks so much <clears throat> like the shawl i'm working on oh dear and again i've knocked some off the needles here gotta be more careful Okay, so during COVID, I was not at my best, shall we say. I had my ups and downs. <clears throat> it started with a very, very sore throat, so I had a couple days of just 
intense, painful throat. Um, and I watched a lot of podcasts, so I can say thank you, Selma and Amy and Kat and Inga and Kia and Megda and many others that I watched. I, I have never watched so many knitting podcasts in my life and I happen to see quite a lot of people still talking about the ranunculus sweater. So one of the yarns that I thought about knitting my shawl with um, was this yarn. It's the, um, the Fiber Company's Meadow and <clears throat> it, so here it is. I've probably shown it to you before. Um, it is 40% wool, 25% llama, 20% silk, and 15% linen. And it's a fine, it's a very light fingering weight yarn. And I was actually struggling with what I was going to make with this very fine yarn. Um, and I, I had gotten it for a, um, a shawl, one of those one skein shawls. There's a lot of yardage in here, over 500 yards. And I saw, so I was in the Webster's and I saw a pattern for a, uh, a shawl. And I thought, oh, I could just, you know, those are so tempting. Um, and then I just have a hard time knitting with something this fine. I really, it could have been wonderful. But anyway, I went to Webster's again, maybe, I don't know, six months later, and they still had this yarn, same color. I got another skein and I thought, well, even if it's not, I didn't even check it. I didn't know if it was the same dye lot, but I thought, what the heck, I'll get another one and then maybe I can hold them together. Well, that is what I've done. So I am doing my first ranunculus and I am holding these two together. And so here is my initial, it's not blocked or anything. Um, <clears throat> see, and I've been really happy with it. The only thing it's been really, the yarn is just so wonderful. So I highly recommend this yarn. And <clears throat> you've probably yourself knit many <laughs> ranunculus sweaters, but um, this is the one by Midori um, Hirose and, or Knit Cafe Midori, I think. Um, she has, I think it's her, oh my gosh. Maybe it isn't. There's a new sweater out called the Paul Klee sweater, and I can't remember if it's um, Knit Cafe Midori or not. Anyway, um, check out the Paul Klee or Clay sweater. He was a famous artist, and it's these wonderful squares. It's kind of a color play thing. I'll put the link below to the... Um, that sweater and also anything I've talked about here. But anyway, this yarn, it just really felt great to work with. As you can see, it's terribly close to this. It really is. I don't, I don't know what happens. I buy them in, um, I go through periods of time. Last summer, my sweaters were all in the purpley shades, so um, I'll have to wear a couple of those <laughs> and show you. Um, this year, though, we are on the blues. And this is kind of a fun blue. I, I don't know what they'd call it. Um, but, oh, I forgot to mention that my Nua Sport is in the uh, Late Night Blues colorway. And then this one, the Meadow is 
the Larkspur colorway. Larkspur. <clears throat> I always think of Larkspurs as purple, so I don't know. But anyway, love the color and love the ranunculus. And the only problem I've had is that I got to a point where it's getting close to separate to, for sleeves and I seem like I didn't increase enough at the right moment. And I, maybe this is COVID brain, but I ended up feeling <clears throat> I just wasn't going to go back. I just figured out how many stitches I was missing. It was an odd number though. So I don't know that I actually, if it was just sloppiness throughout because I wasn't paying attention or a what, but I came out missing like 17 stitches. So I, I just did a, an extra row and I just um, spread out the increases, did a whole row with increases. I just don't think it's going to make any difference. I don't have gauge actually. I'm all, I'm getting something like four and a half um, stitches to the inch, and it's really supposed to be a much bigger gauge, three stitches I think, or three and a half. So anyway, I have a lot more, and I've had to do some math, um, but uh, I think it'll still end up being a pretty loose top. So, and then because I only have the yarn I have, I will make short sleeves. I will try it on after I um, divide for sleeves, make sure it fits okay. And then I will go ahead and do the sleeves. And then I will just knit until I run out of yarn. That's my strategy. I almost never have a yarn chicken problem, but I'm, this is the close I'm going to come. Closest I'll come to yarn chicken. Okay, I need to, uh, let's see, I need to wrap it up. So I'm going to tell you one thing. I'm hoping to record again very soon because I have a lot more uh, to talk about. But I'm expecting a call and I can also feel that my, um, this is, I'm reaching the end of how much I can talk. But I just wanna tell you about a book I read called The Shepherd's Life by James Rebanks. And it's a book written by, uh, he is a shepherd. He also, uh, he, he, after a beginning, a beginning of his life being not very, uh, being a little disdainful of uh, academia, he ended up going to Oxford and getting a degree and he works as an expert advisor to UNESCO on sustainable tourism. But he is, he was raised to be a shepherd and he still is a shepherd. It had, the book has some really nice pictures. Um, they are not raising the sheep for wool, which initially when I was reading the book, I was disappointed by that. But they raise them for um, food and um, they are a heritage breed. Um, I think it's Hedgewick sheep, and he's in the Lake District of Northern England in an area where a lot of the land was preserved by Beatrix Potter. She donated, she bought up a lot of land, a lot of small farms to preserve them, and on her death, she donated them to the, um, oh gosh, I don't know if it was the National Trust in England or, or exactly what, but then, and then on her husband's death, he, de he donated the remainder. So together they preserved a lot of, of, um, of uh, farmland in that area, which is a wonderful thing. There's some really beautiful pictures in here that I think he took and it's even though it's not about wool um, it's just a lovely book about what it means to be a shepherd and taking care of of the sheep um, I really enjoyed it he's a charming writer and um, it just I, I barreled along with it so even though I'm a 
mostly a fiction reader, I really enjoyed it. And if you have some kind of a, a particular interest in this, um, I would highly recommend the book. The other, um, <clears throat> another book, I, I, I did read a lot of books um, while I was um, down, partly to distract me. It wasn't that I felt so great, but I, um, I, I was having trouble feeling comfortable with my uh, intense cold symptoms of COVID. So um, I read a book called The Sweetness of Water by Nathan Harris, or Nate Harris, a beautiful, beautiful book. And um, it's about the, uh, it's in the reconstruction period, which is a time period that is very hard to read about, very grim after the um, tragedy of the um, Civil War. Uh, life was still very difficult under Reconstruction, um, but the book itself is lovely, and I don't think you'd regret reading it. And I also just read The Sentence by Louise Erdrich. She's one of my favorite writers. Um, I'm sure I'll talk more about her, but she wrote a book that takes place in the current day, um, and... Um, um, she herself is a minor character in the book. Um, there's a bookstore and she's the owner of the bookstore. And in real life, she owns a bookstore in Minneapolis. I believe in Minneapolis. Um, and so there's another character, there's a main character is not her, um, is, a, is a woman who has a rough history um, but ends up working in a bookstore and a ghost is involved and um, some of our current day problems are involved. Um, but I really enjoyed it and it sped along, so I recommend those. <clears throat> okay, I'm starting to lose my voice, so I'm going to end it here, um, but I'm going to record again fairly soon. I'm hoping next week. So um, be on the lookout and thank you so much. If you've come back, I'm so sorry for the delay and um, thank you so much for coming back. For subscribers, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate it. It makes me feel so good. I get these little notices, so-and-so subscribed today, so-and-so subscribed and it, it really makes me feel good. So I don't have very many of you, but I don't need very many. It just feels fabulous to have you here. And if you're new, thank you for watching and I hope you'll come back again. <clears throat> so, okay, me and my little cough are going to end now, but I'm hoping to post this soon. And um, I wish you good health and happy knitting. Bye-bye.